My name is Dr. Catherine Schofield and I'm a senior lecturer in South Asian Music and History at King's College London. Since the fall of Kabul on the 15th of August, I've acted as the external lead of a loose coordination of volunteers from the music sector across the Anglophone world, including a number of Afghans and the Northern Irish charity Beyond Skin. We came together during the Kabul airlift to try to assist high-risk musicians to evacuate and to be resettled elsewhere. Under the Taliban, musicians are collectively threatened with punishment and forbidden from working. Our organization, now called the International Campaign for Afghanistan's Musicians, ICFAM.info, has a threefold remit to get governments to recognize all musicians under the Taliban as members of a particular social group with a well-founded fear of persecution under the 1951 Refugee Convention and to prioritize them for humanitarian resettlement. We provide reliable and trustworthy information to musician asylum seekers and refugees from Afghanistan. And we raise funds to aid the most vulnerable and destitute musician breadwinners still inside Afghanistan. All of us are either academics in university music departments or professional musicians, sometimes both, with professional links to Afghanistan. Many of us worked with one or more of the music education institutions in Afghanistan. Others, such as myself, are scholars of the music of the region or are themselves Afghan musicians. As a group, we're able to offer research-based and practical expertise on music, music institutions and musicians in Afghanistan, but we're also 100% committed to helping our colleagues in dire need. As professional writers, musicians and events organisers, we're adept at networking with other political, social and cultural stakeholders to create lobbying efforts to raise the profile of the plight of Afghanistan's people in the public eye and the media, and to organising fundraising and awareness events, all with the aim of helping musicians and other vulnerable Afghans get to safety and survive either inside or outside Afghanistan. So far, ICFAM has helped facilitate the evacuation of several hundred musicians to Germany, Portugal, France and elsewhere, and some of them have now joined our team, set up a secure digital repository for musicians' crucial ID documents, performance records and documentation of persecution, partnered with registered charities to raise thousands of pounds for direct aid to musicians and other vulnerable Afghans through concerts and events, pushed Afghanistan's musicians up the agenda of UN Special Rapporteurs, UNESCO and other policy groups as documented in written reports, helped refugees who've arrived in Northern Ireland to re-engage with music as part of Beyond Skin's Musicians and Artists at Risk Resettlement Scheme, worked in coordination with other groups lobbying for vulnerable Afghans across the UK, Europe and US, and have kept the plight of musicians in the public eye through mainstream and social media, including two big letters signed by the bulk of UK's musical leadership and in front of the UK government agencies, thanks to a strategic partnership with Political Organisers Action for Afghanistan, led by Zera Zaidi. I think what we've achieved, a drop in the ocean though it is, is testament to the fact that concerned individuals from a single cultural sector, music in this case, can be active agents in the defense of human and cultural rights and the protection of cultural heritage. What is required is firstly commitment and senses of urgency, responsibility and humility. The dropping of ego is crucial. You need individuals with expertise across a range of skill sets, communications tools and a set of ethical protocols for using them securely and effectively. We use signal groups, proton mail and teams for meetings and wide networking and coordination with other groups working towards the same goals. And we've had a lot of connection with Penn International, Penn America and Penn England. Critical to success is coordinated working and networking with individuals and organizations who have the expertise and crucially the person hour and financial capacity to make things happen on the political front. All of us have full time jobs on top of this work. Unfortunately, it's only by successfully getting the key politicians to act that genuine long lasting protections for human and cultural rights can be assured.